Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Chess Dennis, a 2200, in the three-minute pool. And what are we going to have here? It looks like we're going to have some sort of Benoni, or maybe King's Indian type position. I'm going to play b5. This is an aggressive move. I'm actually like tempting him to play d6 right now. We'll see if he obliges. But my plan with b5 is to um, try to control the c4 square before he gets a chance to do um, c4 himself. He still might play pawn c4, but... Let's go, let's go knight f6 now. He still might play that pawn c4 move, but I, I think it, he'll think twice about it. Okay, he goes a4 instead. I could play a6, right? Nothing wrong with that. I just want to maintain a pawn on b5. I'm going to get some stuff traded off. Probably should go knight bd7 now. And he does play c4. Okay. Let's bring our queen out. I think queen a5 looks decent here. Or queen b8. Queen b8 could be more accurate. Let's go queen b8. The reason I'm choosing b8 is I want to keep an eye on the e5 square. He might try to advance pawn e5 if he can. So I want to be aware of that. Let's go rook e8 with an eye towards playing e6 in the middle and striking back at his center. Now let's take with a rook. So I'm giving myself a backward d pawn, but I think it's worth it because I've broken up his structure and I can pressure the e4 pawn in the future. So I like the way this is shaping up. I don't think knight g5 was particularly good because I think he'll have to waste um, a tempo or two later. Here, if I play queen takes, I'm a little worried about bishop f1 to c4. So let's just kick his knight back first before recapturing this pawn. Just want to cut down on his options. He could still maybe do the bishop f1 to c4 maneuver. I wouldn't be entirely surprised to see that. Okay, that does that drop a pawn? He is attacking d6, but he's losing a defense of e4. Hmm, nearly drops a pawn. Not quite. Well, maybe. Can I take it? If take knight d2, maybe? And I have d5, though. Let's chance it. I don't have time to calculate it entirely, but my instincts say that this is probably okay. So I'm going to do it. The onus is on him to get the pawn back now. My rook on e8 is undefended, though. So I have to be aware of that. So I was thinking this move. And if he takes on e4, I can take on c4. Actually, regardless of how he takes on e4, I should take on c4. Now here, do I take with a queen? Queen might be best. Yeah, I like queen takes. I do see he has a simplifying line. He can trade queens, and then he can play knight f6. I take with my knight. He that trades the rooks on e8, and then he takes on a8. And we're in an end game where um, I'm up a pawn, but Check. yeah, he's going to go for this line I just Check. was mentioning. I'm up a pawn, but if he can trade off a little bit, it's fine for him. I bet he'll play bishop d5 now, yep. Okay, I think he wants to go bishop f4, so I should seek to stop that. I'm going to play g5. Problem is he can go pawn f4, though, right now. He does not does not do that. Okay, in that case, I think I should take the opportunity to just get rid of this pawn. I think he could, he should still play f4. He does not again. I'll get my king out of the pins. Now if he goes f4, I can play f6. It's nice to know. Now he plays f4. Hmm. Hard to say that my winning chances are that great in this position, because it's hard to play against these... Uh, Let's just go here to try to force this pawn forward. It's hard to play against this, this structure he currently has. I need to get my knight around to attack this guy somehow. It's going to be tough, though. I'm worried about his king getting active, too. Let's try to get our king going. Let's just see where this leads us. And always there's the threat of going into a... Um, Opposite color bishop endgame. 
that's always hanging over my head. Let's do this. Time warning. Let's go here. Yeah, I'm not doing a very good job of attempting to win this, but there's not really much I can do anyways. He could have just traded into the end game right there. He didn't do it. Yeah, he's trying to keep like winning chances alive. Oops, Check. didn't mean to do that. Okay, now I'm like worse. And I gotta try to draw this position. Check. Oh, I lost on time. <laughs> yeah, I maybe should have acquiesced to a draw earlier. Although, I offered a draw and he didn't take it, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah, that guy was pretty fast towards this, down the stretch there. Um, I think I was justified in taking on e4, though. This is like a radical move, b5. It's kind of an unusual position, but you know, I figured, like, why not go for it? I think maybe d6 is the only move to try to fully take advantage of this, but if d6, I just go knight c6. And yeah, he can take on e7, but that actually facilitates my development, doesn't it? I just take back. So, I was happy with the way this, this played out. The only thing I'm really curious about is um, whether I could have grabbed on... whether I, I was justified in playing knight takes e4. Okay, here I'm also curious about something, what I should do in this position. Okay, computer likes queen b8. Because my fear, I almost played queen a5, but then I was worried that he might go e5. Because my queen is not eyeing that square. And if, let's say, d takes e5, knight takes e5, there's a tendency for the e pawn to become loose in positions like this. Benoni or Benko players will know that sometimes this can happen. Especially Benko players. I guess Benoni, maybe not so much, but... Hmm. I guess I'm okay if I do this and then take here, since if he takes e7, I can win d5. The engine's showing a line like this where black gets sufficient play. But I'm happy with queen b8. I think queen b8 meets the goals of the position pretty nicely. Just defend b5 and also keep an eye on e5. e6, I like this plan too, to get counterplay. Yeah, it seems more comfortable for black now. I agree with this evaluation. That's pretty high, actually. Computer is giving me a, a hefty advantage here. And here I did play h6. I mentioned that if queen takes, I was worried he would go bishop f1 and then put the bishop here and gang up on the f7 pawn. Computer thinks that's nonsense because I have d5. <laughs> okay, that's pretty convincing, actually. His rook on e1 is undefended. So I can play d5 and exploit that pressure. So maybe I was getting too smart for my own good, but still, h6. He went here. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. Computer says queen b8 is better, so why doesn't it like this? It also says this is good, though. Maybe the line that we chose in the game is just best play for both sides. I guess I could take with the pawn if I want to try to keep some tension. And he could do the same exact line. Oh, 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 but I can take Check. with the queen in this case and defend the bishop on a8 so he doesn't win a piece. Yeah, I wonder if pawn takes is more testing then. I see that the computer thinks he should play rook d1 then, going in a completely different direction, just getting out of the pin. Uh-huh. It didn't occur to me that the queen on b5 potentially protecting the rook would be significant here. I didn't stop to think about that at all. I just played queen takes c4. Check. But I, I do think this end game Check. is probably drawn, even though I'm up a pawn. Yeah, and after he gets bishop d5 in, there's probably not much I can do. I mentioned that I was a little fearful he would play f4. And that's because, like, think about what happens after f4. I'll just turn off the engine. But after f4, what are my options, really? Because he's threatening to take on g5. 
So I either have to capture myself or defend this pawn somehow. Um, I can't really defend it. Well, I can't defend it with my pawn. That's clear. That's illegal. So I could play bishop f6, I guess. But um, I don't know. My bishop looks very awkward on this square. So, and if I take, he just takes with the bishop. And then he's hitting this. And he's also keeping an eye on, eight, eye on h6. So if I were to move this knight away, I don't even know where. Let's say f5. I'm sure he could just, if he wanted to do something like, hmm, maybe take, I take b2, and then like bishop d3, something like this. And if this knight moves, he wins h6, and then we're even material. So that's why I thought he should play f4. And also, since he's playing for a draw here, f4 makes sense just to reduce the number of pawns that are present in the position. He played king f1, and I decided to try to liquidate my doubled c pawns. So now I might have some small advantage, but the big thing hampering me and preventing me from truly playing for a win here is the fact that should the dark square bishop ever get exchanged, or let me put it this way, if we ever get into an opposite color bishop position, then the chances for a draw just go through the roof, basically. And this was um, on full display a little bit later in this position. And you can see my time disadvantage was significant. I, I maybe should have offered a draw like sooner. Um, but that was on full display like in a position. Let's see if it, if it goes ahead here. Like this after knight g5. So if he wanted to make a draw, he could do it easily just by doing this. And all he has to do is park his king in front of this pawn, regardless of which way I take back. Let's say I take with the F pawn. He just parks his king in front of the pawn. He has an ironclad fortress. I could even go around and win this h3 pawn with my king. All he would have to do at that point is put his bishop on h5 and move his king back and forth. And black would be up two pawns, but it, will, it would be impossible for him to break through. Um, I'll go back and illustrate that in a second. But um, yeah, and after this, I actually I ran into some trouble, and I was I had you know, 13 seconds compared to his 20-something seconds. And it was just a time scramble after this, and I lost. Was I ever really close to flagging him? I don't think so. He's moving pretty darn fast. <laughs> I was playing almost instantly, too, but yeah, he was too fast. Too much. Um, so, just to illustrate that opposite color bishop fortress I was talking about, I'm just going to adjust the position slightly when the knight g5 move was played. Okay, so here, if white just wanted to make a draw in the easiest possible way, it would be take, or actually, I think we were looking at it when the pawn was on h3, so let's do that. So if white wanted to make a draw in the easiest possible way, take, f takes, king c4, and now let's just say I go and somehow like win his pawn on h3. He, he might even not have to allow this, but like he could maybe put his bishop on f1 or something and stop it. But, well, actually, no. He, I probably can win the h-pawn here if I really want to. Because if the bishop did come to f1, I could get my king into f2. He'd have to move the bishop, and then I could play king g2. So what white would want to do at this point is just park the bishop on h5. Then if black wins, you can see white has like basically a perfect fortress. I'll flip it around so you can see it from white's perspective. But black's up two pawns. But the key components to stop those pawns are in place for white. They got the unshakable king on c4, the unshakable pawn on g4, and bishop on h5. If white could pass right now and give the move back to black, there would be absolutely nothing black could do. Might as well just agree a draw right away. Um, the fact that white has to move, though, means he should move his king. So he'll do that. Moving the bishop, of course, would be bad because black would take the pawn on g4. So white will just move the king back and forth. Um, in the vicinity of the c4 square until black does something like, let's say, bring the king over here, maybe do something like that. At this point, it might make sense now for white to just move the bishop because the king can't go to d3, the square it was going to before. It maybe could go to b3, but eh, I don't know if like they should really mess around with this, even though this is like still a draw. Um, so it'd be better at this point for white to just move the bishop. So let's say... Bishop e8, anywhere on this diagonal, really. And the pawn here is not under attack anymore, so we'll just start moving the bishop until there's 
some pressing reason to do otherwise. If they go attack this pawn and hang out by the pawn again, trying to stop us from moving the bishop, well, we revert back to king moves. So this sort of thing, this fortress, will be very obvious to people who've studied endgames and who know about opposite color bishop endgames in particular. But I'm willing to bet for many people watching this video, this is something new. And you can get very good at recognizing fortresses quickly. So that's why you know, myself and also my opponent, we both knew that in this position after knight g5, if white wants to, they can play bishop takes g5 and essentially just draw the game easily. So that's the power of those opposite color bishop fortresses. Okay, well, sorry I couldn't get the win there, or at least a draw, but <laughs> hope you guys learned a thing or two. And thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.